What's up guys? My name is Ryan and I spent the last few years exploring the Mediterranean and I want to show you some of my favorite places. So here's my Mediterranean top 10. The Mediterranean is home to some of the world's most beautiful destinations. From the cliffs of Zakynthos to the beauty of the Amalfi Coast, the Mediterranean is a destination that needs to be experienced. Let's start this video off in the Italian island of Sardinia. Now with some of Europe's best coastline, pristine beaches, and the clearest water you've ever seen, Sardinia is the place to be. I just got back from exploring Sardinia and it didn't let me down. It's the second largest island in the Mediterranean and there's just so much going on there. One of the most impressive places on Sardinia is the Baunai Coast. It's 40 kilometers of coastline that's made up of massive limestone cliffs and secluded beaches. The Baunai Coast isn't the easiest place to reach. Most places require a hike or a boat ride. When I was there, we rented a boat in Cala Gonone and jetted off to explore the coast. The main reason I wanted to go to Sardinia was to visit Cala Golorice. I think it's easily one of the most beautiful beaches in all of Italy. It has these massive pointy rock formations coupled with green cliffs and Gatorade blue water. We anchored and immediately went for a swim. I mean, the visibility was absolutely incredible. It's some of the best I've ever swam in. Another reason I wanted to go to Caligorice is because there's a sea arch where you can cliff jump. I sent a few jumps off and it was just so much fun. I mean, there's no better feeling than sending a gainer into the ocean. We spent several hours there and just had time of our lives. There's also other cool beaches you can visit on the Baunai coast, such as Cala Marialu. I mean, there's just so much to do and see in Sardinia. I hope you can all visit one day. Now, after Sardinia, let's head over to the Amalfi coast. I have to say this is one of the most beautiful places, not just in Italy, but all of Europe. The Amalfi Coast is located in southern Italy, about a three hours drive from Rome. It's just hard to believe this place exists. Now, one of the most well-known towns on the Amalfi Coast is Positano. I mean, when you see this place in real life, you won't believe it. It's hard to beat the backdrop of the mountains filled with colorful villas against the Mediterranean Sea filled with boats and yachts. If you can handle the skinny roads, I definitely recommend just driving along the whole entire coastline and seeing all the beautiful towns. One notable place on the coast is the city of Atrani. It's one of the best preserved medieval towns on the Amalfi Coast. If you want a more adventurous activity, you can take a hike on the Path of the Gods. It's about a six kilometer trail that takes you above the cliffs of the coast. You will get some of the most jaw dropping views. I mean, just unreal. One of my personal favorite places on the Amalfi Coast is Fiordo di Furore. This is easily one of the most scenic beaches I've ever been to. It's located in this little fjord complemented with an incredible arch bridge. I mean, it's a paradise for cliff jumping. There's so many places you can jump from. The best time to visit the Amalfi Coast would be around May or early fall. You'll be able to miss the summer crowds while still enjoying the warm Mediterranean weather. Now just off the Amalfi Coast, there's an incredible island called Capri. I think it's easily one of the most beautiful islands in the world. I mean, it's a classic Mediterranean island surrounded by crystal clear water and sheer cliffs. If you do go to Capri, I definitely recommend renting a boat. That'll be the best way you can see the island and find its hidden grottos and jaw dropping coastline. One of my favorite features of Capri is the Farglioni. There are these incredible sea stacks that jut right out of the sea. And I just had such a good time jumping off the boat there and marveling at the Farglioni. Another incredible spot on the island is Monte Solaro. It's the highest point on Capri and you can take a chairlift to the top. You can do some little hikes up there and you'll get some incredible panoramic views of the whole island and I couldn't recommend it enough. Now afterwards, we're gonna visit another Italian island called Ponza. Now before the summer, I had no idea this island existed, but after seeing some videos of this place, I had to go see it in person. It's located off the west coast of Italy, and it took about a two hour ferry ride to get there. Now Ponza is full of history. It was a popular island during Roman times with many ruins and tunnels that still exist today. It's a popular island for Italians and Europeans. Now just like Capri, one of the best ways to see Ponza is by boat. We rented one and cruised around the whole island. I was just baffled by the volcanic cliffs and endless coves and grottos. One of my favorite memories of the island was just anchoring in this little cove and spending hours there swimming and enjoying the Mediterranean sun. It's just hard to beat that lifestyle. Anyways, one of the most famous places on the island is Chaya di Luna Beach. It's known for its massive white cliffs and a beach shaped like the crescent moon. You can get there by boat or there is an ancient Roman tunnel you can walk through. I just can't believe how big the cliffs are. 
It reminded me of a mini Zacanthos Grease. Now another fun thing we did there was a hike on the northern part of the island. We got on a ridge and were able to see all of Ponza. The island just has so much charm. Another really cool place to visit in Ponza is the harbor. It's a great place to walk around and get something to eat. I mean Ponza is such an enjoyable island. You gotta check out. Now after Italy we're gonna go visit Croatia. Now I have to say Croatia is one of the most beautiful and underrated countries in Europe. It's home to a dreamy Mediterranean coastline, tons of islands, and beautiful towns. One of my favorite places in Croatia is Dubrovnik. It's one of the most popular medieval towns in all of Europe. The history of Dubrovnik dates all the way back to the 7th century when it was founded by refugees. Now one of the most notable features of Dubrovnik are the walls that surround the city. They're almost 2 kilometers in length and are anywhere from 4 to 6 meters thick and it was used to protect the city throughout history. The unique look of the city has made a popular film location for series such as Game of Thrones. After Croatia, we're going to head over to Greece to visit one of my favorite places, Zakynthos. Now it's one of the most stunning locations I've ever been to. The most famous place in Zakynthos is Shipwreck Beach. Back in the 1980s, a cargo ship from Turkey was carrying illegal contraband and the Greece Navy crashed them into this cove. Over the years, the sand has built up around the ship and it's created one of the most visually stunning locations in the world. The beach is only accessible by boat, so when I was there, I went on a boat tour for about $20 and headed to the beach. I was just baffled by the size of the cliff walls. I've never seen anything like it. After checking out the beach, I decided to get a view from the cliffs above. The view on top is just as good, if not better. I mean, there's just no other place like it in the world. While we're still in Greece, we're going to go visit the island of Santorini. This may be Greece's most popular destination. I went here a few summers ago and it lived up to its hype. One of the most famous places on Santorini is Aya. When you think of Greece, this is it. White houses, blue roofs, and an insane backdrop. I went there early in the morning and had the most incredible sunrise ever. Another town on Santorini is Thera. It's this little town that's built on the rim of a volcano. A really cool beach on the island is Red Beach. It's famous for its maroon colored sand and red cliffs that make you feel like you're on Mars. After, we're going to visit the Mediterranean coast of Turkey. It's full of massive green mountains that line its picturesque coastline. One stunning place on the coastline is Olu Deniz. It's home to this blue lagoon and super long beach and it's one of the best places in Turkey to go paragliding. Now just 16 minutes drive from Olu Deniz, you can reach the Butterfly Valley. It's this scenic beach that is surrounded by steep cliffs. It reminds me a lot of Shipwreck Beach in Zakynthos, Greece. Now the best way to get there is by a boat ride from Olu Deniz, or if you're a hiker, you can make the trek down. Another beautiful place on the coast is Bodrum. It's a picturesque port city full of dock ships. One of my favorite features of the city is the Bodrum Castle. It was built by the Knights of Hospitaller in the 15th century. Today it's a museum for underwater archaeology. After, we're going to head over to France to visit the French Riviera. Now located on the southeast corner of France, it's the perfect contrast between mountains and the Mediterranean Ocean. One stunning city on the French Riviera is Monton. It's a stunning coastal city sandwiched between Monaco and the Italian border. I just love its ports with the backdrop of the Green Mountains. And compared to other popular cities on the Riviera such as Nice or Cannes, this one's not as crowded. So it's a perfect place to visit to escape the crowds. Now if you're looking for some medieval vibes, you can visit the nearby hilltop village of Es. The village dates back to the 1300s and when you explore the city you'll feel like you're going back in time. You can hike to the summit on the town with a fortress on top and you'll get some of the best views of the French Riviera. After we're going to head to Spain to visit the Balearic Islands. The Spanish archipelago is made up of Mallorca, Ibiza, Menorca and Formentera. And when you think of a Mediterranean paradise, this is it. It's home to pristine beaches and some of the world's best cliff jumping spots. When I started solo traveling, Mallorca was the first place I went to, so I'll forever have a special place in my heart. One of my favorite places in Mallorca is Cala Varquez. It has everything from sandy beaches to prime cliff jumping spots. The combination of white limestone, green vegetation, and crystal blue water makes for one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. When I was there, I did one of the biggest cliff jumps and I sent a gainer off a massive 60 foot arch. Mallorca is also home to one of the world's windiest highways, the Road de Sacalobra. It's full of hairpin turns and loops that wind down the mountain. If you follow the road down to the bottom, you can visit Torrent de Paris. It's this awesome beach situated between these two cliffs 
Cliffs. I mean, I just couldn't recommend Mallorca enough. It's one amazing place. If you're feeling like partying it up, you'll have to visit Ibiza. Now, while Ibiza is known for its crazy nightlife and party scene, it also has some of the world's best beaches and scenery. Me and my brother had the crazy idea to go during Halloween, and while we didn't take any pills in Ibiza, we sure found some incredible Cliptum spots. One of my favorite places in Ibiza is this little island called Isla de Isvedra. It's this rugged, uninhabited island that shoots over 400 meters straight out of the ocean. There are lots of myths and legends about Isvedra, and some claim that it has magnetic powers. I'm not sure if that's true. I just know that's one of the most beautiful islands I've ever seen. Whether you want to go to Ibiza for cliff jumping or partying it up with Kaigo, it's one of the most entertaining places to visit. Well, that is it for my Mediterranean top 10. Well, let me know where your favorite place is in the Mediterranean in the comments below. I started a second channel where I make hour-long relaxation films of incredible places around the world. I'll be releasing a film on the Mediterranean very soon. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok at Shirley.Films. It's Ryan, and we will see you later.